The worst feeling you can have as a self-taught or junior developer is the feeling that you got stuck, that you're not progressing anymore. It's heartbreaking, it's discouraging, and believe me, I know that firsthand. I've been through that and I know how it feels. The main problem with this is that you start to think that you are not good enough and that's the worst thought that it could cross your mind. However, you need to know that you are not the only one that has this feeling. Virtually any self-taught developer and I would dare to say virtually any developer experienced this feeling at least once. But listen up. I've got your back on this one and in this video I will tell you, I will explain you exactly why you have this feeling, what is the cause of this feeling and of course how you can overcome that. Welcome and thank you very much for joining me on this video where we'll try to analyze exactly why we feel that we get stuck, why we feel that we hit a wall and of course I want to show you or to explain you how can you overcome that. First of all I want to tell you that there is some good news and there is some bad news regarding this. The bad news is that if you have this feeling then you're probably stuck so probably your feeling is right. The good news is that there are plenty of ways through which we can overcome this wall and get to an exponential growth when it comes to our programming knowledge. The first step to get over this hump is of course to analyze and understand what the cause of this problem is. The problem with this is that unfortunately we tend to look for the problem in the wrong place. And usually it's our skills. We start to doubt on our skills. Maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I shouldn't continue. That's always the wrong answer and that's always the wrong root cause. Because no matter what you do, no matter what your skill level is, no matter how talented you are or not, the only thing that we have everybody in common is progress, is improvement. And as long as you can improve and be better today than the day before and tomorrow better than today, then there is really a place for you and you should definitely continue your journey. Instead, let me explain you where the problem really is. And in fact, there are three different problems that I have pinpointing during the years when looking at myself and of course at other self-taught developers. The first problem is that we are spending too much time on courses and videos. Yes, you heard it right, too much time on videos. You might say, yeah, but that's exactly how we learn and I would argue that there are some different reasons why we don't learn if we really spend too much time on courses on videos. The main problem is that really there is an abundance of courses out there and videos and resources. There's an ocean of them. And we always tend to drink all the ocean in just one sip. And of course, this is not possible. So this is the very first problem with this approach. Now, there is unfortunately also another part to this. Harvard studies has, have re recently shown what effect social media has on our brain. And if we think a little bit about this, how social media evolved during the past few years, we tend to consume content that is shorter and shorter and shorter and in a faster and faster way. Reels, TikToks, YouTube Shorts, everything, just swipe, 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 go to the next one, to the next one, then to the next one and so on and so forth. The thing is that our brain basically releases dopamine and dopamine is a chemical in our brain that is in, relate or in strong relation with this feeling of happiness. So we want more, more, more and more. But you would say, hey, but how does this apply to learning and to courses and to videos? Because, well, that, this doesn't really seem to be the same thing. And I would argue, well, and unfortunately, it is the same thing. Let me ask you a few questions. How many times or how much time do you spend just by browsing and scrolling through courses in Pluralsight or Udemy or any other source? How much time do you spend scrolling through lessons in a different course instead of just watching really focused one of those lessons? How much time do you spend on YouTube? Or better said, how much time do you spend in average on a YouTube videos? Is it more than 5 minutes? If you say so, well, I have to say that YouTube analytics actually contradict you. Because people usually spend less than 5 minutes even if they try to learn something when they watch a video on YouTube. So as long as you keep doing this, it's just keeping on track with the dopamine release. It's just go to the next one. And you don't really learn from this anything because you're watching, but you're not watching focused. You don't understand things. You just go to the next one. You just go to the next one. And the brain tells you, hey, good job. You have done it. But in the end, when you do a little bit of self-reflection, you get into this feeling that, hey, I'm kind of lucky stuck. I didn't progress anymore. So how can we fix this problem? Obviously, the first, the very first thing to do is to stop 
watching continuously courses and videos on YouTube about the programming language or about the framework that you have started to learn. My advice is to simply get one course done and then at least for a couple of weeks, don't touch any other course on, or YouTube video on that topic. What to do instead? Just keep coding, work on a personal project, start a new personal project, and for at least two weeks, just code, code, code. Do you need any help? No, don't go to YouTube, don't go to the course. Ask for instance ChatGPT to help you out, and it will. And this is one way that you can continuously progress, because instead of just browsing and browsing and scrolling and keeping on track with your dopamine levels, what you will do is you will learn, you will basically understand, better understand all the concepts that you have learned during the previous course. So don't touch any other course until you work at least two weeks on a personal project. But then there is a second way to fix this problem and that is or that implies to actually get a mentor. Mentors are very important. They are more important than the courses or than the videos that we watch because mentors can keep us on track with exactly how we need to progress and where, and where we need exactly to progress. Mentors are really very important and you can get one. You certainly have a friend or an acquaintance or even you can get in touch with guys on YouTube or on other places that you think that they would be good mentors. Just reach out to them and tell them, hey, I would like to have a mentor. And even if they request, I don't know, maybe some kind of reimbursement, that's an investment that you should definitely make. A mentor can walk with you through different problems. They can review your code and explain to you where you have done things wrongly. And trust me, you will learn from having a mentor more than from 100 different online courses out there. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, like this video, because this is the way through which you can make also other people discover this type of content. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do subscribe and eventually also hit the notification bell button so that you are always notified when there is something new happening on this channel. Now let's move over to the second problem or to the second cause why we actually get stuck and we don't progress anymore. And that has something to do with the knowledge that we acquire and to, with the fact that we set ourselves unrealistic targets or unrealistic goals. Let me explain you what I mean by that. Now, when we start learning programming or when we are at the very beginning stages of this, when we are junior developers, we kind of like, okay, know that programming is difficult and there are a lot of subtleties, but we are not aware about how complex this field really is. Now, the thing is that when you start to learn a new concept and a new concept and a new concept, what happens is that you start to understand or you start to see how much you don't know already. So at the beginning, you are not aware of how much you don't know, but as you learn, as you progress, you are aware and even more aware about how much you still have to learn. And this feeling can be discouraging and it could bring us to understand or it could nurture this feeling that we got stuck, that we really hit a wall and that we will never get anywhere near to the level that we would like to be. This problem, of course, has a very simple solution. And of course, the first thing, it has everything to do with the mindset. Don't focus on the big picture anymore. Don't focus on the things that you don't know. Focus on the things that you know. And one practical action that you could take daily to actually focus on that is to at the end of the day, just recap everything that you have learned in that day. Like all the concepts, all the patterns, whatever you have learned new about programming in that day, you should just recap at the end of the day. And this will give you a feeling of progress. You will understand that, okay, even if there are still a lot of things that I need to learn, I have made some progress today. And that feeling that you have made some progress today is really valuable because it is what it will keep you going tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and so on. Let's get to the third cause of the feeling that you're stuck and you don't progress anymore. And this is once again a mindset problem and it has to do with our current education or the way that technology has shaped the world today. Because we are now very accustomed with this idea of instant gratification. Think about it just for a second. If you want to order some food, you just order a Glovo. If you want to go somewhere, you just order an Uber. If you want to travel to another place, you just book a flight, book a hotel or book an Airbnb. But the idea is that once we want something today, we have a mean from a technology point of view to really get it. Also movies. If I want to watch a movie, do I wait until it gets released to the cinema? No, I go on Netflix, I go on Amazon Prime or other services like that. 
we are really accustomed with this idea of instant gratification. The thing is, however, that when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to networking, instant gratification doesn't work because these are processes that take time, that take resiliency, that take patience. So you need to find a way mentally to keep going even if this doesn't really bring you an instant gratification. Solutions to the problems might be, and it would probably sound, sound a little bit weird to you, but there are really very small actions that you can take in your life and that will kind of like make you understand or make you value more things that you cannot get instantly. For instance, instead of watching Netflix, go out and watch a movie at the cinema. Instead of ordering food, just go out with your friends, with your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Go out and eat outside. So try to start doing things that don't give you instant gratification. Now, of course, I don't say that you should really quit everything like all the apps that we use. No, I just say that we need a little bit of more critical thinking and let's bring also into our life some actions, some things that don't really rely on instant gratification. This is a great way to actually teach our mind that our mindset that we also want to pursue purposes or things that we cannot get instantly. So we'll become more patient, we'll become more resilient, and we will do things more in depth. So let's do a short recap at the end. The first problem is what I would call the social dilemma. And the solution to this is to just not watch continuously courses and videos and of course get a mentor and work on personal projects. The second problem is that we focus on the things that we don't know. So the solution to this is of course to focus more on things that we know and the good action that you can actually do to achieve this is at the end of each day to recap all the things that you have learned during the day. The third thing is, or the third problem is what I'd call instant gratification. And the solution to this is also very simple. Try to undertake actions that don't give you instant gratification. This being said, if you enjoyed this video, once again, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, like this video, because that is a great way to make it easier to discover for others that might find it useful. And if you didn't subscribe to this channel, please subscribe and also hit the notification bell button so that you are notified whenever we have some new content on this channel. Last but not least, if you have any question or if you want to get in touch with me, just use the comment section of this video. Don't be shy because I would like to start a discussion going. It would also help me to understand better what exactly your concerns is, what exactly your problems are, and it would help me, of course, to even maybe create more specific or more content that you would find helpful. Last but not least, if you think that there might be other people interested in this content, don't forget to share it with your friends in your social networks, wherever you think that there might be somebody that would find this video useful, please share it and I'm sure that they would be thankful. This being said, thank you very much for watching and keep coding.